So let's now bring those two concepts together, Java beans and scopes. And the way we bring them together is by using these attributes. Attributes are used to store data and we can associate an attribute with a given scope. And we do that by setting an attribute, which will then create the attribute in the nominated scope. We can then get access to that attribute by calling the get method and we can remove the attribute from the scope by calling the associated remove method. Now these attributes are used to store data. Objects such as Java beans are able to store data as well. And so if we were going to set an attribute, we would first need to set up an object. Could be a Java bean object, might be some other kind of object, example coming up later on. And having got this object ready to be put into the scope, we can then call from the request object dot set attribute, and we specify two parameters. The first is a string, which is the name by which this attribute is going to be known within the scope, and then the reference to the object that is going to be the attribute. This is for the request. Of course, if we're going to do this for a session, then we have a slightly different reference here. If we now want to get this attribute that has been set, then we call request.getAttribute and pass in as the parameter a string with exactly the same name as was used for setting the attribute. Now the thing to bear in mind here is this object could be of absolutely any type. It could be a string. It could be an array list. It could be one of our own Java beans. And therefore, because it could be of absolutely any type, get attribute is simply going to return that reference as something of type object because the object class sits at the top of all the inheritance hierarchies within Java. Therefore, this reference, obj, can refer to absolutely any type of object. And so that's how get attribute returns the reference. So it might be that we have set, let's say, a string as an attribute called attrename. But when get attribute works, it will look for attrename, find it, and return a reference to it as a reference of type object, not string. It's still a string object, but the reference to it is a reference of type object. And therefore, typically, what we would have to do is then to typecast that reference back into a string. We'll show an example of that a bit later. If we wish to remove the attribute from the scope, then we call from request the remove attribute method. And again, we must specify the name exactly as it was spelled when the attribute was set. 